In the previous video, I showed you how to quickly match the camera's angle to my reference artwork and block the scene out with some simple and basic shapes. In this video, I'll be showing you how to light the scene. Usually, the lighting phase comes near the end of a project when the texturing phase is done, but I want to roughly set up the lighting now as it would determine the placement of some of the props later on. Hi, my name is Ken Liang, and welcome to how to make a Dark Souls boss room. Lighting is one of the key elements that sells the look and feel of a Dark Souls environment. If we take a look at reference images for Dark Souls artworks, we can see that a lot of them have this heavenly rays effect that creates a really atmospheric feel. To do this, we will be creating a volumetric lighting setup in Eevee, because you get to see results in real time and it looks really great. First of all, we need to add a cube and scale it up just enough to cover the entire scene. Switch to the shader editor and give the cube a new shader. Let's name it Volume. As the name suggests, we need to look for the principal volume shader node. Delete the principal VSDF node and connect the principal volume node into the volume input for the material. Tone down the volume density to about the value of 0.015. Change the viewport display for the cube to display as wire so that it would not interfere with our view in the viewport. Now, we can change the camera's viewport to rendered view and start tweaking the light in our scene. Move it to the top, near the center of the dome, and change the type of light to spotlight. Point it down towards the statue and adjust the size of the cone accordingly. Don't forget to change the background color of our world to pure black. We only want to see the influences of our light in our scene. Continue adjusting the parameters of the spotlight. We want to get the light on the edges of the statue so that we can easily read the silhouette of its pose. When you are done, duplicate the light and change it to a point light. Lower down its power and move it down to the top corner of the pedestal. This will act as the light source from candles, so give it a red orangey color. Lower down the custom distance it covers to about 3 meters and duplicate it to the other corner of the pedestal. Now, duplicate it and move it to the top where the chandelier would be. We want to fill up the dark areas on the statue near the face and upper torso. You can switch to wireframe view to match its position to the chandeliers on the reference artwork. As you can see, the overall features on the statue are quite well lit right now. I want to continue tweaking the lights so that my focal point is near the face. This light at the top left is not really contributing much to this statue. I have it in the reference artwork because I was using two statues in that scene 
and I needed a third light source from the chandelier to bring out the features on them. Since there is no point to it in this scene, I might as well delete it. Here, I give the point lights a larger radius so that it casts softer shadows on the statue. I also reduce their power so that it doesn't overpower the spotlight. The same treatment goes for the candle lights on the pedestal. Next, duplicate some of those and scatter them on the ground to light the pedestal and its surrounding. Each of these light represents a group of candles. So let's give them a larger radius and distance to cover. Put one at both sides of the off-screen area to light up the sides of the pillars. Make another one and put it at the center of the top so that it illuminates the inside edges of the pillars. Give it a larger radius so that it illuminates the floor as well and give it a slightly blue hue because we want it to look as though it came from the far reach of the spotlight. It is also nice to have contrast between warm and cool lighting in our scene. We are done with the lighting setup for now, but rest assured that we will continue to make adjustments as we fill our scene with props and other details. In the next video, I will be showing you guys how to model the bookshelf for the pedestal in our scene. Thank you for watching, save your file, and I'll see you in the next video.